Yes, everyone, welcome back to the Irish Hotspur, and this is going to be our second opposition preview of the season, and we're doing it with an Everton uh, Everton fan here, Ellis, and looking forward to this one because I actually happen to have a big soft spot for Sean Dyche, by the way, Ellis, so I'm curious to see what you may think about him. Please don't worry about upsetting my feelings if you happen to <laughs> not like him as much as I do. But let's get straight into this one. If you can for me, everybody, please smash the like button. Do head on over, of course, to Ellis's channel, and then uh, that will be in the description as well as the comments pinned down below. Hello, but Ellis, your expectations as an Everton fan going into the season, thoughts on Sean Dyche's time at the club so far? I know it's a bit of an open-ended question, but yeah, your expectations going into this season, second season under Dyche. Well, uh, thanks for having me on. I'd say, to be fair to start with, we just want a season that is a lot less chaotic than last season because as I'm sure you and all your viewers will know, we had the most chaotic season last year, points deductions, not knowing where we stand, takeover issues, issues on the field, off it. It was just crazy. Everywhere you looked, there was something going on. There's never a day that went by without some Everton news and it was normally quite bad as well. So hopefully a season of stability. We're hoping for to be well clear of relegation and by, say, March, April, we do not want to have those same worries that we've had now for the last three years. We actually got 48 points last season under Sean Dyche. So if we can replicate that, perhaps better it, even better it by one or two points, I think that would be a successful season. And I think Sean Dyche at the moment is probably just the right man to guide us into that new stadium and ensure that when we do get there, we're still a Premier League club. Yeah, I mean, you guys were all over talk sport, I know, all of last season, and it did feel a bit unfair at times, you know, where it just felt like Everton were just kept getting thrown under the bus by either FFP or just kind of just anything that seemed to come your way in the Premier League last season. And it's nice to know that, you know, your expectations still are just, yeah, avoid the chaos. And I think as Spurs fans, probably we don't have as much chaos as you guys, but we're a bit similar where we always feel like we're a bit up and down all the time. But can you see maybe Everton giving Spurs a tough match? We drew last time at your place if you do remember that one you had a late comeback and while we played more convincingly at home around christmas time i think it was december 23rd we only won that game 2-1 so do you expect us to do you expect to hurt us in any way with you know the big sean dodge long diagonals and set pieces that type of thing because spurs are pretty vulnerable to that if i may add well we're normally quite poor at the tottenham hotspur stadium we were always poor at white Hart lane as well and last season it was it was just the worst possible start to the game at your ground because you got those two goals early on. We almost gifted you a couple of them, really. Obviously, Richarlison scored, which we weren't pleased about. And to throw that away so early, it just meant we had a mountain to climb. And we actually played really well in the second half of that game. We really did fight back into it and arguably at the end maybe even deserved a point. So there's some hope there from that. But looking at the game on paper, the way that you played against Leicester... It's going to be one of those attack versus defence games again for you. And I'm sure that won't be pleasing because I think it was quite a frustrating game for you guys against Leicester. But I'd expect we'd hope to offer a similar opposition to what Leicester did, sitting in tight, making sure we're organised. We've got a very makeshift defence this time around. So trying yeah. to be organised will be even harder than normal. But I think Everton will be hoping to sit in, really frustrate Tottenham and hopefully just nick one somehow. I imagine most Everton fans will be more than happy with a draw here because after that first game, we just don't want to lose like, heavily again. Yeah, and to be honest, I'm not really the biggest fan of Steve Cooper. I don't really rate him too much, but I do feel like Sean Dyche will approach the game to a similar degree that Steve Cooper did. It's just that I expect Dyche to cause us more problems when you do eventually get the ball back and when you are looking to try to hit us in the transition. And what I do like about Dyche is compared to maybe Steve Cooper, it felt like in Steve Cooper's first half, they were just praying, you know, anytime that they just hit it long to Jamie Vardy. Whereas with you guys, when you try that, there is some sort of kind of, you know, approach to it. There is some type of method. There does seem to have like a, a good end product to it. Whereas, you know, I felt like with Steve Cooper, he actually was getting away with it for the most part in the first half. And if it wasn't for Spurs, terrible finishing, we could have been two goals, three goals, four goals up even by the end of that first half. But in true Premier League fashion, if you don't bury a team, you know, if you don't punish a team in the first half, they can't come back, uh, come back and bite you. Right. And that's exactly what they did in that and getting that equalizer. And then once they did kind of sadly, a very Tottenham fashion, we did end up kind of losing our heads, losing our mentality and to be fair, maybe even similar to that 2-2 draw that we had at your place, kind of looked like Everton, or not Everton, Leicester were kind of looking to go on and win that one, which was very scary to think about. But how do you expect maybe then the first half to go? Something similar, but 
I don't know. I'm kind of complimenting you guys. I think that you guys will cause us maybe some more problems than what Leicester City did in that first half. Because I think they kind of got away with it, to be honest, in the first half. And if we were more clinical, it could have been a very different game. I think we'll ride the wave in the first half. Well, that'll be the aim anyway. It'll be to withstand some of that early pressure, of course. You guys being back at home, you'll be up for it. And you know there's yeah. got to be a reaction from your team. But there also has to be from us. And it really depends what team you see, to be honest. We've we're going to have a makeshift back four. You'll probably see Mason Holgate play at right back, which no Evertonian would have expected would still be playing for the football club. Michael Keane's going to have to fill in. There's rumours of a Tarkovsky injury as well. So that defence is going to be shaky and that's what we're going to be relying on. And in yeah. terms of our attacking output, our new signings, Jesper Lindstrom and Illaman and Dai, are not deemed ready yet by Sean Dyche, which has baffled quite a few of the fans because he seems to think that you have to play four or five games of the season until you can bring a new signing in. So it's whether we see those players and it's whether that makeshift defence can really withstand that early wave. Because if we go 2-0 down again like we did last season, I don't think we'll have it in us to fight back this time. Yeah, and I was actually going to mention that about you know some of the starting lineup players that Daesh went for. You guys made a, a ton of, I think, interesting signings, right? You brought in that guy Jesper Lindstrom, you know, from, I believe he was at Eintracht Frankfurt. He might have had a little loan spell somewhere else that I'm trying to remember at the moment. Then you did bring in Njai, who was from Marseille, and he also had a great season at Sheffield United. I mean, were, is that a surprise to you that Daesh didn't play any of the new signings, or is that kind of typical of Daesh? I'm not too sure. I think a lot of managers would want to bet in their players when they bring them in, wouldn't they? But for us, it was more of a case of, well, they've played some games in pre-season. Yes, they've had a couple of niggles, but we were hoping to see them feature more than they did. And it's just, even I suppose, even if they're not 100%, it's just the way that it makes the fans feel when they start the first game. It's great to see those fresh faces playing and Jake O'Brien at the back as well. Yeah. He could very easily have started ahead of Keane, but Deitch chose to trust his his man, Michael Keane, who he's managed at two different clubs now. So it's more of a case of Daesh is very stubborn and he trusts his players. He, he has certain favourites who he, he trusts and sticks mm. with. And that's unfortunately meant that the new signs haven't featured. So I don't think they're going to throw them in against Tottenham either. So I imagine it'll be the similar team to what you saw last year, really. And um, in the case of maybe players like Dominic Calvert-Lewin, you also have Beto. I felt like those two last season were, in a way, very spur strikers because they didn't finish, I feel like, a lot of their chances. And I think you guys also had a bit of a problem with, you know, creating maybe enough chances in a game to win it, but the strikers or the forwards just weren't bearing them. Would you say that's the case for Everton both last season? Is that a worry for you going into this season? Because that's a big worry for us as Spurs fans is we create a lot of chances, just no one seems to be able to finish them. Yeah, I think that's a massive problem for Everton. We don't create quite as many as you guys, and we don't play that free-flowing football that you guys do. But I think that that was the problem at the start of last season. We were playing well in games, not putting the chances away. And there's even an argument for the first game of the season against Brighton that we probably should have put some of those chances away, and maybe that wasn't quite the 3-0 game that it ended up being. So in a game against Tottenham, you don't get as many chances, do you? So I know that you will, you will give us opportunities because... You play such an open style. But when we do get that ball on, on the transition, we have to make the most of it. We have to use the ball well because we're not going to have that much possession. So it's going to be imperative that Everton do take the chances. And that's yeah. going to be down to Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who at the moment doesn't really even seem like he wants to be at the club. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Right. And it feels like, you know, you've had Big Dunk, you know, put his arm around him at times, you know, to try to get him through some bad patches. And it feels like Sean Dyche also was a good guy for him. But I just remember watching a lot of Everton last year. And I just, you know, it kind of, I think, backs me up here when I looked at some of your stats. And this is, of course, one of the very nerdy ones that maybe even Yanks like myself try to use. But, you know, the XG, right, versus the actual goal scored. And you guys had one of the worst differences, I think, in the Premier League when it came to what, you know, the XG algorithm had you guys down for versus the actual goals scored in general. And I think that just is a problem that us as Spurs fans feel like that we could be running into this season. So should be fun, you know, where chances galore maybe for both teams, but no one actually to end up finishing. I did mention this, you know, a bit earlier, but Spurs are also been a bit vulnerable from set pieces. Kind of that was the case very much towards the end last season where it felt like pretty much anybody that had a head on them was going to score against us from a set piece. And Vicario, our goalkeeper, was not too convincing at dealing with them. I remember in that 2-2 draw, that was something that Daesh clearly was, you know, trying to pinpoint us on and 
definitely did punish us for. Do you expect that to be, I don't know, a, a chance for you guys, you know, to try to get something out of this is from a set piece? I think that's going to be a priority for us all season, to be honest. When you don't have that many attacking patterns, you're going to rely on set pieces. And we benefited from it so much last year. Yes, fans will say, oh, we can only score from set pieces, which isn't great. But to have that asset is fantastic. To be able to know that when you get a corner, that can almost feel like a penalty for you at times. That could be huge for us. And with the signing of Jake O'Brien, there's another six foot six defender. Jared Bramfwaite won't be fit for this game. He's tall as well. Tarkovsky always seems to win that first contact. So unless you guys have figured out what we do, I imagine that we're going to be aiming to get first contact Tarkovsky and somebody to be in the box to finish that. But that'll be huge for us. I imagine we'll be trying to play for corners, trying to get those mm -hmm. opportunities because set pieces are going to be crucial again this season for Everton. Yeah, uh, my Irish partner, Dave Harris, is a big fan of Jake O'Brien, and I'm pretty sure he would not like to see him play in this match and probably would rather a Michael Keane, actually, instead, who I do feel like is, like you maybe might have mentioned, is somebody that perhaps the Everton fan base isn't that keen on or feels like maybe has not really shown to be, you know, the most reliable of defenders for that back line. So I think just for this game, we're going to hope that it's Michael Keane and then, you know, for the sake of, you know, the rest of your season, I think we hope that it could be Jake O'Brien for you guys. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> thoughts on uh, Ange Postacoglu since coming to the Premier League? Do you have any opinions about him, you know, or any players that maybe you're especially worried about with Spurs? Maybe just first on Ange, you know, thoughts on him since coming to the Premier League? I really like the guy. I think he's I think he's been a breath of fresh air, really. He's so honest, isn't he? Seems like a great character as well. And at the start of last season, obviously you played so unbelievably well. And then it got to a point where you're playing against the bigger size and you're thinking, is he too naive here? Is he not really putting the brakes on when needed to in the bigger games? Because one thing about him is he will stick to his style no matter what. And that, I suppose, comes at a cost of not always having a plan B. And that's the only doubt that I've got with Postacoglu. And, of course, in his second season, he claims that he wins trophies. So I'd be happy if you guys did go and win a trophy because, like Everton, it's a team that doesn't win enough trophies for the size of the club. So I think Ange has done really well so far. And I hope that it can finally be a period for, for Tottenham of a bit of stability, having the same manager and finally progressing. Because I look at that side and you've got such a balanced team now. There's so many good players in there and it's really starting to mould into his image. So I'm hoping for the best for Ange in Tottenham. Yeah, me as but well. Not on Saturday, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Um, in the case of, you know, both managers, they do speak very honestly. And I have joked that this is kind of the two managers in which you'd probably both want to have a beer with or, you know, both want to go on a nice, you know, long walk with and just chat about life, chat about football in general. Just very approachable guys, very likable guys. But uh, I think that's, you know, kind of sadly starting to wane a little bit with Ange Postacoglu. People are starting to doubt, you know, his tactics. People are starting to think, you know, is this guy a bit naive and a bit too stubborn, you know, for the Premier League? That's often come up. Any Spurs players in particular that you might be especially worried about, guys that have haunted you in the past? Well, I think Ben Tanko was fantastic against Leicester. So I'm quite glad that he's not going to be playing, but obviously devastated to see such a bad injury. And it's such a shame for him because he was injured for so much of last season as well. Yeah. So he'll be a key player that you're going to miss. And in terms of other players that have haunted us in the past, there's one man, isn't there? It's Richarlison. He, mm -hmm. If he does feature at all, which Ange might play him for that reason, then he's likely to score. But even if he doesn't play, you've got Son, you've got Solanke and... I think Solanke deserved a goal against Leicester. He didn't quite get it, but he deserved it. And we know that he used to play for Liverpool as well. He actually played uh, for Bournemouth against us on the last day of the season a couple of years ago when we were trying to stay up. And it seemed like he was desperate to get us relegated that day. So <laughs> the fact that you have two strikers who might have something that they want to score against us, then that's a bit of a worry for me, to be fair. But the whole team, you look at your defence, you've got Van der Ven and Romero, such quick centre-backs, of course, mm -hmm. and then... A doggy and Pedro Porro really attacking fullbacks, but can also defend as well. Porro maybe not so much, but I, I really like the team that Tottenham are building. And for more signings coming as well, that would be really interesting. Obviously, Wilson Odeberg coming in. I hope he doesn't feature. And uh, Archie Gray may now start, mightn't he? So hopefully we could play on that inexperience, perhaps. 
Yeah, I think a lot of us want Wilson Odebert to feature because Brennan Johnson has been quite frustrating, you know, in, in a lot of the games and especially in that last one where he also, you know, with Solanke and a few others was guilty of not really finishing their dinner and not really finishing their chances against Leicester City. But yeah, I think uh, Richarlison is certainly a player that we hope to feature because he can uh, he can hurt you guys. And he had such a terrific game against you guys away from home last season. And then that was kind of be one of my final questions for you. And really appreciate you doing this and thoughts on Richarlison's time at Spurs because I know he means a lot to you guys he had a special connection with your club and he's had injury problems that's kind of been the big highlight here at Spurs was that an issue at Everton I know that was a two-part question the injuries that were not an issue at Everton at all I know really? there was he had groin surgery or something didn't he um at Tottenham and it just doesn't seem to work out for him at all and we know how good a player he is I'm sure you guys know as well but just hasn't quite worked out and it's so sad to see as Evertonians because we'd love him back at the club as well. And if there's any possibility that we could get him on loan, then we'd absolutely snap him up straight away. And he's, for me, he, he played for Everton a lot on the wing and did really well there coming in from the left. But then when he played up front, he looked really strong as well. And now you've brought Solanke and I don't think he'll get as many chances up front. So I just can't see a way that he could start every game for Tottenham anymore. So I don't know whether he might be thinking about leaving, but He's just never seemed to fully settle there, has he really? And all Evertonians still wish him well. He'll get a good reception at the weekend. He nearly celebrated when he scored against us last year, but he soon rectified it. So hopefully he doesn't have to celebrate this weekend. He's just one of those guys where the goal goes in and I don't think he knows how to control himself. But he is <laughs> no, he obviously doesn't. he has that special connection with you guys. You can clearly tell that. And it's interesting you say actually that the injury problems weren't as much of a, a thing at Everton has only been a time a thing at Spurs. And that's kind of been my only kind of gripe with him is that you know when he's had these injuries they've just been at the least you know kind of convenient times both for him and as well as for the club we brought him in to be Harry Kane's kind of substitute to be his backup and then to eventually take on you know the pretty much insurmountable task of you know replacing Harry Kane but he never really was able to do that I think because of the injury issues but I think when he has played for the most part when he is healthy he's looked really good for us and I was always a big Richie fan I just do like his kind of relentless work rate I think that suits Ange and he is very good in the air and I've always been a big fan of uh, strikers that can you know really dominate uh, you know, center backs in that sort of fashion, kind of similar to a big dunk or a Duncan Ferguson for you guys. I think Richarlison has similar attributes when it comes to, you know, his sort of aerial prowess. And even at one point, you know, in a Spurs shirt, we were even joking, he only seems to score in the air <laughs> compared to with his yeah. feet. Uh, He's with very us. good at heading the ball for the size of him, really. And he even played with injuries for Everton. That's why we love him so much. It's just that commitment. Like he would pick up injuries but he'd just do whatever he could to stay on the pitch so he's a fighter he's a great header of the ball but also a quality player with his feet sorry i was cut on mute there but i mean that's uh, pretty much all my questions for you uh there ellis and thank you so much and looking forward to doing your preview on your channel can you tell us about your channel the toffee blues tv and you know any final you know predictions or probably scoreline prediction is really what i need from you so yeah, go and check out the Toppy Blues. Loads of Everton content on there from a load of different creators. There's a bunch of us that all do Everton content. There'll be reactions after. There'll be a preview as well. And for my prediction, I'm going to have to be positive, seeing as I'm coming on your channel. I'm not going to go and back against us. So I'm going to say it's going to be 1-1. I think that we might get an early lead and then you'll just peg us back because the onslaught will be a bit too much. But I'd be happy with the point because it would mean we haven't lost two games in a row to start the season. I think I'm going to go for a 2-1 um, in the sense that I do see you guys scoring on us from a set piece, but then kind of in similar fashion to the last game where Spurs maybe go on to score two kind of early, but don't end up really bearing uh, kind of the, the rest of the chances and putting the game away where kind of the game is still relatively in reach for you guys. So I'm going to go for a 2-1. Thank you so much for doing this with me nice and early as well. And uh, everyone, please thank Ellis in the comments down below and check out his channel, Toffee Blues, please. But we'll see you next time. Come on, you Spurs. Everywhere we go. Yeah.